Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the XPO Solutions Limited Q1 FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from Christensen IR. Thank you and over to you. Thank you, Stanford. Good afternoon to all participants in the call. Welcome to the Q1 FY22 earnings call of XPO Solutions Limited. The results and investor presentation have been already mailed to you and they are also available on the company's website. In case anyone does not have a copy of press release or, or presentation, please do write to us and we'll happy to send you the same. Representing the management today, we have Mr. Balaji Vishwanathan, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. Desikan Narayanan, Chief Financial Officer. Mr. Balaji will start the call with brief overview of the quarter gone by, which will be followed by Mr. Desikan, who will be getting into detailed financials. After that, we'll open the floor for Q&A session. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is mentioned in this call which gives any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with risk and uncertainties that we face. This risk and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospective filed with SEBI and subsequent annual report, which you can find it on our website. Having said that, I now hand over the floor to Mr. Balaji. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Asha. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining our call. Uh, just to give a quick overview about uh, you know, the quarter gone by, uh, we have had a reasonably good quarter, and we continue to see positive trends, uh, both in terms of pipeline and in terms of opportunities that actually presents to us. Uh, the entire ITE industry uh, in India, or rather uh, across the globe, is actually seeing a good amount of traction thanks to the uh, the acceleration of the digital transformation and uh, acceleration of many projects that the clients are trying to do over the last couple of quarters. Uh, the initial challenges around COVID seems to have gone by, and people are making sure that uh, you know they are keeping abreast with the latest technologies, more in terms of uh, security and digital transformation as well. So that's actually giving us some opportunities, uh, similar to how all our peers and uh, the, uh, the bigger IT companies in the Indian IT industry as well. Uh, so that we see continue to see good uh, traction and the demand across all the regions, particularly in Asia, and uh, we've also seen our demand picking up in Europe uh, as well. Uh, the opportunity for uh, specifically automation, digital services, and specialized testing, which is around uh, uh, testing the digital enablement and also on security and performance, uh, is, has been growing uh, significantly, and that's where we see maximum amount of demand as well. Uh, during the first half of this calendar year, uh, you know, we have had we have added actually uh, some of uh, some key strategic clients. Uh, one client uh, who is actually based out of uh, Asia Pac, and other client which is a large uh, uh, global uh, company which is uh, operating out of India already, and uh, they are uh, strengthening uh, their offshore and India presence. <clears throat> and both of them uh, are looking to uh, contribute to more than a million during this particular calendar year. Uh, digital services continues to grow uh, from. Uh, close to around uh, 14 to 15% of our revenues uh, in December 2020. Currently, it's doubled from there, and it's close to around 29% right now. And we expect it to be around 33% uh, you know, during the end of this calendar year. Uh, our offshore business contribution has once again significantly changed, uh, and uh, that continues to change over the last three quarters uh, with more work coming offshore and uh, some of the on-site presence uh, reducing uh, which is actually good for us from a margin perspective, not even though not so much from a top line. Uh, currently, almost 60% uh, or uh, over 60% of our business comes from the offshore headcount, around 
which comes from uh, on site compared to uh, 48% uh, you know was the offshore contribution uh, year on year if i were to compare four quarters back so uh, that's uh, that's actually helping us in building a robust platform in india and uh, also in uh, helping us in making sure that we are able to forecast and uh, anticipate the kind of demand that we can expect and uh, based on that we can skill and look at where what kind of uh, capability that we need to build as well <clears throat> Uh, while it while the industry trends and uh, the uh, kind of heating up is uh, also having a negative impact uh, primarily because the costs are uh, increasing significantly uh, we are also seeing an uh, increased amount of attrition similar to all all our other itps as well uh, while that would have uh, that may actually have a temporary uh, impact on our costs but we don't see that uh, having a large long term impact uh, we expect it to probably last for another couple of quarters at best uh the second wave of covid also had some impact on us because the, the spread of covid was quite uh, significant and uh, quite rapid and uh, we also faced some impact with increased levels of infection with the nar teams and we also had the uh, few unfortunate uh, casualties as well and uh, we stepped up the vaccination we stepped up uh, hyper care for our employees we also had uh, you know, emotional health uh, uh, emotional health uh, assistance which we provided through uh, you know external uh, specialists as well uh, trying to work through the current uh, stressful uh, situation across both uh, the team members and their families and we conducted a few drives in chennai where we had the scale in other places we have been trying to partner uh, to get our teams vaccinated uh, we are probably currently at approximately 55 to 60% of the teams getting vaccinated and we still have uh, you know the remaining people who have to uh, complete their vaccination doses and which we are uh, constantly following up as well on the merger of the uh, unlisted entities which we announced uh, around 3 uh, 4 weeks back uh, the process has started we have applied or uh, we have submitted our representation to uh the regulatory authority we are going through the process uh, the process would take anywhere between uh, two quarters to uh, seven to eight months we expect uh, in the best case scenario to get this completed by q1 the calendar year q1 of uh, 2022 that is march 31st 2022 but give or take the kind of time frame that it takes nowadays uh, due to the pandemic it may probably happen either in march or later by april uh so given that uh, we may probably not have all the information about uh, the unlisted entities which we can present here because they still follow the same uh, private limited company uh, norms and regulations uh, which is not the same as what we do in terms of quarterly results and publishing uh apart from that uh, you know we we have uh, uh, signed up for the facility in Coimbatore uh, we are doing significant amount of uh, hiring and ramp up both from campus and also uh, in the and uh, the early stages uh, and uh, investing in uh, you know the uh, the upskilling uh, for the teams uh, across uh, multiple locations primarily between Coimbatore and Chennai and Bangalore and uh, we expect that to continue and uh, we are also working on enhancing that to spread across Pune and uh, the other locations as well uh anticipating uh, to be ready before uh, the actual merger of uh, the entity as well so that's quickly about uh, uh, about the past quarter and some latest updates i'll pass it on to jessica to cover uh, the specifics on financials thanks balaji good evening to all uh, we started the first quarter of uh, fy 2122 with a revenue of 588 crores compared to the you know uh, compared to the uh, compared to 79 crores in the previous quarter, growth was around 11%. Uh, we have reached a new benchmark in the revenue numbers compared to any of the previous years. Bidda ended at uh, 14.6 crores against the previous quarter of 19.1 crores. We did see a drop in Bidda percentage to 16.6% uh, compared to 24% in the previous quarter. Earning per share has moved to 16.6%. From 10.72 to 12.5 due to PAT ending higher compared to the previous quarter. 
uh, major contributor to the increased cost uh, mentioned by Balaji was some salary cost and third party consultant cost due to headcount increase. So the third party consultant cost is grouped under other expenses. That's the reason you see the increase in the other expenses starting from this quarter. We started from previous quarter, we did this change. Our third party headcount increased to 336 now from 253 last quarter. Other than third party consultant, we also incurred cost uh, during the quarter, cost of merger program and some training. And uh, we also had some rates and taxes uh, reversal in the previous quarter because of uh, the previous quarter, we had a true up of rates and taxes. This quarter, a little bit, it, it, it shows a little higher amount. So that's about the reason for the change in the expenses. And then the other income, it also includes a forest gain of 26 million. Last year, quarter, we had a loss of 23 million. And looking at, uh, that is on quarter on quarter comparison. With respect to last year, same quarter, year on year comparison, we had a 15% uh, growth year on year. With revenue ending 88 crores as compared to 77 crores in the previous uh, year, same quarter. Dip in EBITDA from 25.5% to 15.6%, majorly contributed by the same set of fees and what I mentioned uh, before. PAT is at 14.1%, against 183 in the previous uh, year, same quarter. So this is the brief about the result. Now I will open it up uh, for the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may please press star then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star then one. The first question is from the line of Mithun Avast from Kiva Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Um, just wanted to understand uh, this increase in cost. Uh, is this more like a one-time uh, uh, increase? Because, you know, obviously our EBITDA margins have uh, come much lower than what we had guided in the previous call. So just wanted uh, an insight on that. And... Uh, what has driven this appreciable uh, growth in the top line uh, this quarter? Um, is it that we won uh, several new orders? Uh, just wanted your take in terms of what is the hiring number that we're looking for in FY22. Uh, and, uh, and secondly, could you just give us a little bit of an update of the uh, 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 business which is getting merged and how, at least in terms of trends, how they are shaping up? Uh, even if you can't talk about explicit numbers. Thanks. Sure. Uh, the reason for the cost increase, like what Jessica mentioned, uh, are threefold. One is uh, the uh, increase in the third-party consultants. Third-party consultants, is, uh, it's actually uh, uh, it's the delivery team primarily, but instead of hiring them in our roles, we are actually trying to source it through consultants uh, so that we can actually deploy them faster. Because if you were to hire them, higher laterals from the market. Uh, it takes uh, anywhere between 30 to 60 to 90 days, depending upon what kind of notice periods that they go with. And that's the reason why we normally go through consultants for short-term uh, requirements or who we need to hire uh, uh, you know, faster. And that is the reason. And typically what happens is that uh, there is a time lag from the, di from the time you hire uh, before you deploy them uh, of anywhere between uh, three weeks to uh, four weeks because uh, it takes that kind of time frame to do background verification and all those other elements because we service mostly financial services clients and uh, we can't just hire and deploy them uh, straight away. So that's the reason why you see that uh, now because if you were to look at the uh, the growth, most of it has uh, most of it is like an it, it has a lag effect. So you will see this over the uh, next couple of quarters as well as we see the demand. Uh, but it's not it's not on one time it's not something which is going to be in long term impact uh, per se uh, 
uh, it will settle down as we uh, you know start hiring more uh, in the in the coming quarters uh, as well and the second element of the cost increases uh, like what basically mentioned earlier around the merger costs and uh, some of the rates and taxes which uh, which we reversed in the last quarter because of which we saw on higher EBITDA margin in the last quarter so now there are no reversals because uh, the most of the uh, catch up approvals and reversals happen only at the end of the financial year uh, so that's the reason so there is no systemic uh, challenge and we still expect that we would be in that uh, yeah, you know anywhere between uh, 18 to 19% uh, beta margins is what our expectation is even though it's not a guidance uh, per se on your uh, second question on what is driving the growth it's similar to what uh, you see across the indian it industry there is a lot of demand pent up demand uh, because of uh, which was held up uh, in the first three uh, quarters of covid uh, which is now you know surfacing and everybody wants to try and accelerate uh, most of the digital transformation program because they want to reach to the customers faster as they see uh, competition catching up as well so that's the primary reason so the demand is increasing and primarily the demand is increasing in the uh, uh, in the newer technology uh, spaces and also the traditional touching spaces as well uh, and uh, we see demand across uh, asia us and uh, 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 and the european markets as well and we have seen uh, the change uh, if you were to look at the earnings presentation as well it talks about the the growth by region and uh, you could see that the, the primary growth has been in the asia pack and the europe region uh, primarily uh, and uh, on the last question on uh, uh, the uh, the merger and the, the to be merged entity the unlisted entities of the group uh, we don't uh, you know since they are private uh, limited companies there isn't really any quarterly uh, you know financials or audits that uh, gets done but as the uh, if you were to look at the current uh, trend they are in line with what we were expecting uh, you know as part of the uh, the merger as well and they are also growing in similar paces because uh, uh, the the industry as a whole is growing and uh, we are just trying to keep our growth pace at, as uh, faster than the industry and uh, you know they are in line with whatever expectations that we have uh, in terms of the merged entities numbers as well this again you want to add anything more so no, i think you have summed up uh, very well thanks all the best thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ashish dash from sher khan please go ahead uh, hi sir uh, thank you for the opportunity sir you mentioned that ebitda margin would be 18 to 19% and uh, this quarter it's around 16.6% so uh, do you mean that uh, on sequential basis there would be improvement for the remaining quarters and when would you take the wage hike uh yeah so you know like what i mentioned the primary reason for the cost increase or uh, the uh, the ebitda margin to go down is around the third party costs third party consultants who we are hiring uh, you know to deliver and uh, you know depending upon when they get hired and when they are able to build uh, is where uh, the lag is so some of the growth which happened in the month of uh, the last uh, part of may and june uh, we have to hire and keep them uh, for three weeks or so when their uh, uh, in a verification and all those kind of stuff happens so that is the reason why there is a lag over a period of the next two to three quarters it will all settle down because the the pipeline will be uh, will be uh, Uh, will become streamlined so uh, we expect that for the financial year uh, we'll still be uh, uh, you know in the range of around 18% and uh, uh, in terms of uh, sorry uh, i missed your second part of the question the salary hike i asked the salary hike is uh, uh, is calendar year so our salary hikes actually happen in january uh, but uh, the kind of uh, pressure that we are seeing on costs particularly on compensation uh from the industry the kind of uh, the salary increases that we are seeing in the market uh we may probably have some impact in uh, when we do the salary hikes uh, in uh, january uh but uh, we are still confident that we should be able to manage some of the other levers if we are able to increase the offshoring percentages and other stuff 
Okay, you are mentioning that in Q4 FY22, you will take the salary hike, right? Hello. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we lost okay. you in between. Okay, okay. I'm as asking uh, when you mentioned that January is the uh, cycle for your salary hike. So you would take salary hike in Q4 FY2022. That's right. Correct. Okay. And uh, so on the revenue side, uh, last quarter, last con call, you mentioned that uh, the growth would be between 15 to 20 percent in FY2022. And but the Q1 the sequential growth has been even strong, uh, 11 percent. Um, so uh, you are saying that demand is uh, strong. You are hiring third party consultant and all these things happening. So the growth momentum on sequential basis, can we expect? Uh, to continue uh, for the remaining quarter? Yeah, that's uh, we expect that it will continue for the remaining quarters as well. Q4, that is the quarter of October, November, December, normally gets a little slowed down because of number of holidays. Uh, but overall, I think for the financial year, we should still see the 14% uh, the plus growth that we talked about. Um, sir, on sequential basis, I'm asking, uh, on uh, this quarter you have reported 11% Q&Q. If, if this happens, uh, this run rate goes on, uh, so it would be the growth would be around 25 to 30% year on year in FY2022. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So uh, you, your Q4 or Q3 uh, of the financial year, uh, considering that the number of working days will be much lesser compared to the other uh, quarters, and most of the uh, countries go on holidays and other stuff, we may have a small, uh, you know, plateau there, but other than that, the rest of the quarter should should still see, uh, you know, the one which we are talking about sequentially at 10 to 15 percent uh, growth, and that could end up anywhere between 15 to 20 percent. Okay, uh, sir. On the last question, uh, your top five client growth has been even strong for last two quarters. So could you please highlight or give some color why, uh, how the growth has been uh, so strong uh, for top five clients, what has happened there, and how this, this top five clients uh, would uh, continue to report strong growth? Yeah, so it's not the same top five. Uh, so that is what uh, you know. I had mentioned uh, you know, in, in the initial comments as well. We signed two new customers between Q4, the calendar year, uh, it is October, November, December 2020, and uh, the Jan, Feb, March uh, 2021. We signed two new clients uh, who are who are who have actually now moved into our top five as well. Primarily, uh, these two clients are actually contributing to uh, an accelerated growth, and our existing customers, uh, like I mentioned earlier as well, saying that we have done investment in uh, sales and client engagement teams in uh, Spain and in. Uh, uh, in Belgium, that we have some of our strategic customers, and that's showing some results as well. Okay. Uh, so my last question, uh, if I can, uh, uh, last one call. Uh, you mentioned that the combined entity cash position was two seventy seven crore. So any any uh, number around uh, that uh, as of June 30, 30, 2021. And uh, as we mentioned that there are supply side issues and some margin uh, impacted with some margin impacted for our entity uh, exclusive solution. So is there uh, uh, can you give some qualitative commentary? Is there any uh, impact on unlisted companies, Margie? Oh. On, on, no, on the cash side, I think uh, we uh, we have the what currently what we have is around 31 crores is our cash balance. We mm -hmm. want to uh, we want the number of uh, the unlisted companies since we are not auditors. So I can tell that only for our uh, listed company. And uh, I'm sorry, I missed the second question. Can you uh, repeat it? Uh, there are supply side issues in the industry. So, uh, any qualitative commentary from your side? Uh, so, how our margin for the unlisted entity was 19%. So, uh, is there any impact also uh, also for the unlisted companies uh, on margin front due to these supply side issues? Uh, I think. Uh, Balaji was mentioning about uh, about the unlisted company that on a overall 
trend, it, it seems to be in the same trend of what we saw in the month of March that continued. But on the margin side, it is generally doesn't have a, the quarterly things have a ups and downs on this. So we don't see any much changes in that. But once the quarter moves to the second and third quarter, that we will have a more uh, uh, known numbers which will come it out rather than the first quarter to look at it. Thank you so much, sir. I have Even more questions. The supply side issues, uh, Mr. Das, uh, yeah. the, the supply side issues are not impacting what we are delivering to our customers right now. So, okay. Thank you, sir. I have more questions. I will come back in queue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, and hopefully, I'm audible. Um, Right. Congratulations, right. Balaji yeah. and uh, Desikaran on very strong uh, traction on the customer side. Um, so, Balaji, if you can just uh, give a little more color on these two large customers, um, you know, in terms of what segment they are in and uh, who, you know, were the competitors for this piece of business, that would be helpful to start with. Sure. So, uh, one is actually an, uh, uh, you know, a large uh, payment technology company. Uh, who have uh, customers and their own services uh, across the globe, and we are actually servicing them, uh, you know, through their own center uh, in India, and we are doing it through their own center in India for multiple geographies, uh, including uh, their U.S. Uh, operations and uh, their European operations, and also the Middle East operations as well. Uh, so that's one customer where, uh, you know, uh, where we have been growing uh, quarter on quarter sequentially for the last three. Quarters. For the last three quarters that was signed sometime in november uh, the first week of december of 2020 and the second customer is actually an uh, another uh, multinational insurance carrier uh, but uh, this is uh, signed in the southeast asian market uh, covering across uh, singapore malaysia and indonesia uh, and uh, this is also for that digital transformation program and uh, you know what uh, how we are helping them in both in the quality assurance services and also in security and performance engineering services as well. Great, great. And any update on the uh, US side? Uh, you know, have we hired? I think we hired some people last quarter, if I remember correctly. So, that's right. Um, how's that uh, coming along? If you can just uh, comment on that. Uh, it's uh, uh, you know we hired a person uh, last quarter and uh, he started uh, uh, you know. The traction and the, uh, the pipeline uh, is something which is coming up at this particular point of time. We are uh, we are also organizing a couple of uh, you know events and uh, road shows in uh, the US uh, in, uh, by end of September and early October as well, uh, just to try and create some brand visibility for ourselves. Uh, okay. And uh, there is a uh, inside sales uh, team which uh, we have dedicated for uh, the US market as well, which to uh, try and uh, build some of the leads and uh, uh, you know, opportunities through him. And we expect that, uh, you know, we should start uh, showing some results, uh, you know, starting from the next quarter onwards. Got it. And just on the numbers, if I look at your other expenses year over year, um, they have gone, you know, from uh, 16 crores to over 30 crores this quarter, right? Year over year basis. Yeah. So, so, um, Whereas the revenue year over year has gone up by 12.2 crores. So obviously, you know, you won't be hiring these consultants at a negative margin. Uh, so I'm assuming the merger cost must be uh, also a big chunk in that uh, 30 crores number. So any color on that? But predominantly, it is only uh, the third party consultant increase. I, I mentioned you about the number of people, almost 100 people increased. But Compared to last year, it is much more. Last year, we last year same quarter we had around uh, 120 to 130 uh, third-party consultants. Now it has grown up to around 300 and 300 uh, or consultants. So that's the reason you see the big increase in the uh, uh, third-party consultant cost. As far as the merger, uh, it's, it's in the range of around uh, uh, 20 million is the range what we have spent on the uh, merger uh, uh, related expenses. And you would see that uh, going through uh, in the next few quarters also, basically? 
which you are talking about the merger the merger cost or the merger cost merger cost will reduce because major part of the things has been done now only the milestone which is uh, which is pending is the sebi and uh, and uh, there are only two things one we need to get the stock exchange and sebi and uh, nclt so there it's only a part of the uh, cost will be coming in not major cost will come in most of the cost is got done for all the dds and uh, other uh, related items okay yeah but, uh, so, but one thing which uh, uh, sorry uh, this can uh, just to yeah, add uh, stamp, there is one big duties. element of stamp duties uh, stamp duties are part of the merger okay. yeah that's that's a yeah. huge component that's a big one yeah that's a huge and that will happen when when we get the final nclt approval which is correct. expected correct. either in march or uh, april may, yeah correct okay okay and any idea what that cost would be like uh, in in the amount terms uh i can check and get back to you because it depends upon the number of shares we issue as well as the asset uh, involved i will i will come i'll get back to you on that okay okay and lastly what was the contribution from the group in this quarter and did it increase compared to the last quarter uh it was uh, almost flat uh, it was around 21% of our uh, revenue was from the group okay okay so so it seems that then the growth in the quarter was predominantly from uh the uh, initiatives that we have taken right so that seems to be going yes. at a much higher clip then correct yeah i just wanted to uh, you know uh, uh clarify one yeah. point there rajesh uh, you know while we said the group revenue is still 21% uh, the engagement in uh, countries like spain and belgium even though it is actually a direct uh, client of ours the selling and uh, client engagement is through the group uh, because uh, while we are reimbursing or we are man we are having a sales person for us dedicatedly but mm-hmm. it's actually managed through the group so uh, that also is a significant uh, contribution so if you include that uh, i had mentioned this some three four quarters back as well if you include that the group contribution is almost uh, 45% right right and but what i'm thinking is compared to the last quarter if you include that in the last yeah. quarter also uh, yeah yeah apple to apple comparison it's still flat yeah so that means your other business is going much faster than the group is absolutely Yes. Consistently. Okay. All right. Understood. Thank you. If I have more, I'll get back in. Thanks. Thank you, Adish. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Pichha from Multiact. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, firstly, wanted to understand the growth outlook better. So. Uh, you are saying that this year we could end up achieving 15 to 16 percent growth, but when I look at our Q1 numbers, and if I if I were to analyze the current 88 crore run rate and compare it with what we did in the last full year, we did around 301 crores. So that itself work, works out to about 15 16 percent growth for the year. So are we not expecting sequential ramp up from here on, or uh, we expect to grow uh, much more than 15 16 percent? uh see uh, you know if uh, once again you know I, i don't want to make it look like a, you know we are doing a forecast of what our numbers are the expectation is that we will continue to grow at more than what we are at right now because even in the in this particular quarter there is the next quarter q2 or the financial here we will actually see an even larger growth as well so uh, you know the expectation is that we will certainly cross the 15 16 but that's the modest Uh, uh target that we want to go with at this particular point of time so we expect that we'll probably be uh, in that uh, uh you know 90 crores uh, plus is what uh, our expectation is got it got it sir and sir could you also please uh, uh, give us what is the constant currency growth for the quarter hello yeah sorry uh, sorry sir uh, no, i can give it uh, sorry uh, no i was not muted sorry uh, on the quarter on quarter the constant currency growth over 10.3% year on year it is 12.8% okay okay and sir uh, on the head count could you uh, please share what is the employee count including subcontracting end of june 21 compared to what it was uh, a quarter back uh the subcontractor is around 330 and uh, including the employee it is uh, it is a uh, 
what would be our utilization uh, in the first quarter around 83% 83 to 84% okay and what what would be the optimal utilization for us 85 85 to 86 is what we normally target all right so last question from my answer on on capacity office space that we have at a group level what is the kind of headcount that it can accommodate and after this uh, new coimbatore thing that we have done uh, uh, what would that capacity increase to so the pune uh, the pune entity uh, has a lot of capacity uh, because it's an SEZ location it's a two acre campus and uh, uh, you know the current constructed capacity it's uh, around uh, you know 1150 to 1200 out of which only around 800 is being used and then there is another bare shell which also can accommodate another 700 to 800 uh, so you know the merged entity uh, you know, we are, our current capacity itself will actually, uh, that is including the Coimbatore uh, one and all the other centers put together, our current capacity itself will actually take us to close to 4,000, 4,300. And we expect that, uh, you know, as part of this new uh, normal of uh, work from home, uh, we expect that at least 20% of our population will continue to uh, operate uh, from home even after, uh, even, even post-pandemic. So that should actually give us capacity of at least 5,500 to 6,000 people with whatever facilities that we have got right now in the merged entity or going to be merged entity. Okay. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you for answering my question. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh from Zenith. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening. My question is like, what are the challenges that you foresee with the uh, merger? and what kind of opportunities that you foresee with the merge entity? Uh, challenges with the merger, you know, uh, see, uh, it's two different entities, and obviously the challenges is makes, basically to make sure that we are able to integrate uh, both people and processes uh, effectively. Uh, and that's the challenge with any merger, particularly in a services industry. Uh, the the uh, uh, importance of people is very, very important. Uh, you know, that's the most critical element. And so that is what will uh, will probably be our endeavor to make sure that uh, uh, we do that right. And uh, in terms of opportunities, there are plenty of, the opp plenty of opportunities. The first thing being, you know, uh, the entire engineering capability that we can take to our direct customers uh, and the opportunity of uh, trying and uh, leveraging more work from the group now that we have an end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, capability in one entity rather than, you know, going between multiple entities, uh, which was the case earlier. So both of those put together, uh, uh, you know, we are quite confident that the kind of uh, opportunity that uh, presents, uh, uh, you know, is quite strong and, uh, uh, you know, will continue to drive our growth over the next at least two to three years. So can we see more traction from the U.S. business in that case? Not from the U.S. business. I'm saying from the group uh, because uh, U.S. business, uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, if you were there in the last call where Rajesh Krishnamurti was also there, uh, you know, post the merger. The U.S. business, the group is not, uh, well, we have close to around 70, 80 million worth of business from the U.S. That's not our the biggest forte. Our biggest uh, strong Geography is still Europe, and we still have a lot of opportunities which we haven't tapped there in Europe itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikesh from ONGC. Please go ahead. Yeah, just one question. Can you give some idea of what is the order book position uh, of the XPO and what what would be the order book position for the merged entity at this moment? Uh, Jessica, you want to take that? Uh, for the merged entity, it will be difficult to tell that only we can pay about us uh, compared to what we have uh, because uh, we only follow ours. We don't get into that uh, as of now. Uh, 
for us if you look at the order book facility we uh, for the next this quarter will be a major quarter for us where we will have uh, we have middle east going in all state pack also we are uh, seeing more traction coming in out of uh, the existing client which will grow in the apac and uh, we see some traction from the europe as well as uh, some of the clients also is coming out in the us so that way uh, we see that we will be uh, achieving with more than what we thought in the quarter 3 uh, uh, and uh, sorry quarter 2 of the financial year quarter 3 will be a little bit slump as well as you was mentioning that we have uh, holidays and uh, leaves coming in there we see is a little bit slump not uh, to the greater extent but we will have a slump in the in fact the more uh, traditionally is our little week quarter what uh, generally we have and quarter 4 is uh, we we see that it will be like a little bit higher to around 10 to 15 percent higher than what uh, the quarter 3 uh, will be that's the way it is and we see that more traction it is more from an angle of how we are going to serve them is the is the thing which is going to come in because the demand is there in the market we need to time the demand and get the people and uh, uh, supply it. that's that's the more uh, challenge currently we are facing into okay but can you give some idea about quantified numbers that you say 15% more 18% no no idea on quantified number because in earlier in other companies i i, I get to hear quantified that our 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 what are the positions like say 400 crore something like that generally we don't give a guidance that's the reason we are like to system and giving a quantity wise uh, percentage because that that becomes a guidance statement from us which will uh, it is not something which we do we can generally give a overall kind of how the trend will be in the each quarter what we are coming out in until the end of the financial year giving a specific percentage will also always be a, we we generally don't do that that's the reason we spend in giving it yeah. but overall what uh, balaji said in the year on year we will be are looking at something around 15% is the one which we are saying that. but on a quarter on quarter basis to be too detailed for us to even give it as a guidance okay okay thanks yeah that thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rohit balakrishnan from i thought pms please go ahead hello hello am i audible yeah, yeah hi balaji hi hi uh balaji just uh, three questions so one is um so i mean uh we are at uh almost 88 89 crores uh in this quarter so from a uh i mean most of i mean the industry in general other uh companies who are slight bigger than us but still not as big as some of the major ones are growing at four five percent on a constant currency basis sequentially so is it something that we can do or do you think that given we are not in the largest market it be a challenge for us i mean just wanted to get your perspective on that uh you think 4 to 5% uh, cagr on sequential currency yeah sequentially right right yeah we are we are currently uh, you know this quarter we have done around 10.3% and uh, right, right. Uh, you know we are confident that we should be able to continue at least for the next three quarters in uh, in, in that uh, uh, you know either a high single digit or in double digits uh, in constant currency uh sequentially you are saying sequentially yeah oh okay so okay so got it so just as a side note to this question i mean we've not grown like that uh i mean in the in, in in a very long time so just from an organization perspective are we geared up i mean in terms of uh bandwidth of maybe middle management uh i mean is there something that that uh, from that i think in uh, because Excuse that me, kind of growth is i'm sorry to interrupt sir so your voice is breaking yeah i get this just one uh, are you saying you are saying that whether we are geared up for that kind of growth uh, uh, yeah you know we are uh, rohit yes. uh, you know we are building that capability uh, and uh, the we are leveraging the full benefit of what the group offers as well because uh, you know uh, if you uh, recollect uh, two three quarters back as soon as rajesh joined uh, you know we made that announcement around uh, what the group is doing in terms of consolidating consolidating all the capabilities and competencies uh, you know with uh, under uh, digital capability and also on 
automation and uh, quality capability as well across the globe. And that capability is something which we are leveraging uh, to the maximum extent to make sure that uh, you know uh, that particular team guides the uh, you know the middle management team here and also helps us in recruiting the right kind of talent as well. Sure, sure. Uh, the other question was, uh, I think in the in the con call that happened some time back after the merger, uh, I think uh, Mr. Krishnamurti said that uh, they they at a global level there is a target to sort of increase the overall offshoring from single digit to 20% or so or 25%. Uh, I mean, has that process started? I mean, I, I think you mentioned that this quarter also the group business was so, sort of flat. So, I mean, uh, is it that once the merger has happened, only then the process will start or uh, just wanted to get some sense? Yeah, the process has started. There is a specific governance around, uh, you know, what is being offshored and how it is being offshored. But most of it is around the engineering business where uh, the offshoring percentages have been traditionally very low. Uh, so once we do the merger, you will probably start seeing a lot more uh, traction there because that's where, uh, uh, you know, the focus to increase the offshoring is because that's the... Uh, low hanging fruit and that's where the, the maximum number of opportunities are. Right. And and typically engineering services is a higher margin business. I mean I am not taking what numbers you've given because I think there was some one off there in terms of COVID, etc. But in general, uh, are those I mean, is that business a higher margin business uh, in general? Uh, I'm asking and, and going forward also, would that be a margin creative for our business I mean for the listed entity? Uh, the margins are not very different. Uh, uh, you know, it's not, it's it is slightly lower than the the typical IT services margin, but it's not very different. Particularly when we do offshoring, and particularly when we do the transfer pricing through the group, uh, the margins uh, don't differ much because it's uh, end of the day a cost plus when the group business comes up. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. I think uh, that is pretty much it from my side. Thank you very much, Balaji, and all the very best. Thanks. Thanks, Rohit. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rohan Advan from Multiac. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity. Most of my questions have been answered. So just on the financials of the unlisted company, you said they are private limited and you know, they don't do the quarterly thing. So when will we get to, uh, you know, know these financials, uh, will it be after me or will it only be after merger that these financials will be disclosed to the shareholders? Generally, the way it happens is it will be uh, it will be around the end of the year. They do the they have their own uh, audit uh, cycle where it starts around the January February time frame for them to close it for the for the thirty first March. So that's the time we expect that uh, we can get a uh, uh, audited uh, numbers from them. Okay. So and until that, that our yeah. date of yeah yeah oh, right. and our, and also the date of the, our date if you see the merger date the uh, date is also first April twenty uh, twenty two. So maybe at that time we will have the uh, full fledged uh, financials of all these three. We, after that, post that once that audit is over, then we will have some numbers in place so that we can provide it to everyone. Got it. Sir, and when you talked about you know our current capacity and you adjusted it for work from home and you said it's five thousand five hundred, uh, this is including you know the recent announcement that you made of uh, Coimbatore increase of capacity and recalibration in Chennai, or that is over and about that. Yeah, this includes the Coimbatore capacity as well. We have rationalized some of our premises in Chennai, and uh, we are looking at uh, primarily utilizing Coimbatore and the spare capacity that we have in Pune. Okay. So, and this capacity you expect to utilize at the group by FY23 end? Is that uh, the plan? Yeah. So, like what I mentioned, the Pune capacity, there is only one part of it which is ready and, uh, you know, which we can use right now. The other one is a bare shell at this particular point of time, which we will, uh, 
uh, which we will develop or which we will uh, you know fit fit it out uh, you know once we have uh, the right level of demand and including that premises yeah by 23 is when we expect uh, you know that demand to be fulfilled okay so and lastly on the engineering r&d piece if i look at the xpo group i think about you know more than 60% of its revenues are in r&d could you throw some give us some color on the kind of services that they do is it software mechanical electronic you know and and uh, you know is there any is there any peer set you know that are are they like say the ncpss of uh, india or is that different to do they compete with because over time uh, this would become a larger piece of the merged entity so something on that note thanks yeah so the engineering services uh, the the key elements which have done from india is primarily around uh, uh, what we call it as emerging engineering services which is around embedded systems and software design and software testing and software validation uh, for the automotive uh, and avionics uh, industry and the other one is the mechanical uh, industry which is around the plants and uh, you know setting up of uh, uh, plants and setting up of assembly lines and uh, you know the assurance around that those particular services these two are the major ones the third which is fastest growing even in that segment is the digital services uh, within uh, uh, the uh, emerging engineering services as well as around embedded systems and uh, uh, you know uh, the automated car and Uh, the electronic vehicles and all those kind of uh, elements as well. So these are the segments which are growing faster. And uh, on your question on uh, you know uh, when the when the entity gets merged, it, uh, you know the the entity that is getting merged is only around seventy eight percent or eighty percent of uh, the listed entity at this particular point of time. They are not larger than the current listed entity. But the expectation is that it will grow faster because as they start doing more offshoring. Thanks for taking my question, sir, and all this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubhash Nai from Tridap Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, if I'm correct, you said you will have utilized the capacity of five thousand plus people by uh, FY twenty three end or calendar twenty three end. Uh. yeah the expectation is by calendar year by december 2023 uh, give or take uh, you know two three months here and there which will basically complete the financial year as well so so this typically what we are assuming that is more than doubling the capacity we are at 22 2300 today both combined between pune no we are at uh, we are at 3400 today 3400 okay 3400 will go to about 5500 in the matter of two and a half years so that accounts and you say your optimum utilization is about 86% we are at 83 already so what kind of manpower addition plans are there for the next three quarters uh, if you can share that uh, so we are currently hiring at the rate of around uh, 110 or 120 people per quarter uh, okay. net addition uh, because we also have a attrition uh, challenge as well So the net addition is around 120, 125 in terms of employees, and another close to around uh, 75 to 80 in terms of contractors. So that's oh. what we expect for the next this quarter, that is the uh, the Q2 of this financial year. It will slow down a little bit uh, uh, for uh, the October, November, December, but once again we expect that uh, the first two quarters of the next calendar year also should see similar kind of a demand. Uh, we can't foresee beyond that at this particular point of time. Uh, second question I have is about the margin profile. Once you combine both the entities, uh, uh, can you can, can you just probably give us some guidance about what kind of margin profile we are looking at? Are the margins similar between Pune and our entity, or are the margins different? I'll probably have uh, Desi can give you more details, but at this particular point of time, that is as of the uh, March twenty March twenty twenty one, you know, EBITDA numbers. uh the pune entity uh, is uh, slightly more than what the listed entity is but the bangalore entity is lesser than what the uh, listed entity is uh, combined mm-hmm. between the two it's almost the same uh this can you want to add something more yeah correct uh the pune entity as of 2021 was uh, slightly higher on the ebitda side 
which is around uh, uh, 26% was that, and uh, ours around 23.1%. That's the way we ended last year. Uh, of course, uh, technology was around 15.6%. That's the way, and the combined was around 22.2% as of 31st March uh, 21. And with this kind of 10% kind of a growth on last la, last question, can I ask for last question? Hello? Yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, with a 10% kind of a Q and Q growth, which is a very strong growth we are talking about, uh, would it also impact our margins? Uh, it would give some leverage there. Uh, in the shorter term, yeah, it will have uh, some impact on the margins because we need to invest in building that capability and competency. But in the longer run, that is over a three to four quarter time frame, it should ease out as we, uh, you know, build the uh, the pipeline and streamline it. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Faisal Hava from H E Hava and Company. Please go ahead. So, sir, uh, within engineering uh, R and D. Uh, uh, what would be the pecking order of our uh, parent in in the world uh, listings, or you know how uh, are the top ten uh, engineering R and D firms of of the world? This is one question. And second is uh, uh, for the hiring part, uh, will we be comfortable with hiring much more and having a, some kind of a bench strength uh, rather than you know uh, be be short of talent uh, in in some quarters to come? And uh, uh, how, how, how will you strategize that? And third, do we uh, see any kind of a cultural or any kind of uh, you know issues in integrating both the firms? Uh, you know, as far as management structure, or the leadership, or even the uh, 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 you know uh, because we have had two different leaders for both the companies. So you know, you know and we we propose to to continue with that arrangement uh, uh, as a separate business unit. So do we see any kind of cultural issues in integrating both firms, which are Actually, in very very different uh, verticals. Uh, okay, I'll probably go from the last one. Uh, we don't see any cultural issues because we have always been part of the same group, uh, so uh, that uh, that has never been a concern. And uh, it's not two different businesses because the the, uh, the Pune entity uh, ninety percent of the business has always been on the quality side of the. Uh, uh, it's been on uh, quality assurance, which is similar to what Explore Solutions have been doing. So it's not very different. It's the it's only the engineering side of the business which is different than what Explore Solutions was doing. So we don't see any cultural challenges there because it's under one group and under one management. And uh, you know most of the cultural elements and uh, the policies and procedures are all defined uh, at the group level, which is what we, well, with some amount of flexibility of what we are able to do uh, uh, in India. On your second question on uh, bench and uh, uh, you know what what we are trying to do in strategizing for uh, building the supply side or building the capabilities or other capacity, we uh, we always had a, a small bench to cater to our future demand, but the demand nowadays is higher than that, and the challenge always is that you can't keep people idle and. Uh, with the kind of uh, uh, demand that the others are seeing, you know, the, the guys whom we keep idle are the ones who will get targeted first as well. So uh, at this particular point of time, the objective is to try and keep it as optimum as possible. And that's where we are using some of these third-party consultants and uh, uh, some of them who are able to actually supply us resources on a shorter time frame, even though, it, it, uh, even though we have to spend a little more uh, but our objective is to try and make sure that we ta tap into the demand to get into the customer, which will help us and grow in the future. Well. On the first question on your, uh, uh, the first question was around uh, R&D and where we are in the pecking order uh, as, uh, as a global engineering company. Uh, we are certainly there in the top 10, uh, but where we are is something which I also need to figure out uh, through any of the Gartner reports and others, because we've also figured in some of them, but I don't have the uh, exact uh, uh, picking order. We are certainly there in top 10 for sure, whether we are in top 5 or whether we are between the 5 and 10, is something which I need to come back to. So would India be the first option for any kind of outsourcing that they would like to uh, do? Uh, no, there is already an... Uh, you know, another engineering offshoring center in Romania, which the group has. So depending upon what the languages are and what the kind of uh, 
capability we are able to build here uh, it will be between romania and india so romania would be would be for which language all the eastern european languages and also the you know uh, considering that it's part of europe you have german capability in other as well so uh, you know in the engineering business the language capability is uh, only that much it's more the technical capability which we have to build which is what we are trying to do as well so, and uh, there is really no preference between where the work will have to go it's the question of uh, you know where we are able to build the capacity uh, in the fastest possible time frame so building up could happen much much better in india because of the sheer engineering population that we have uh yes and no it's the question of uh, you know whether we are able to tap into that as well because the kind of demand that we are seeing in the market right now uh, we need to make sure that we stay competitive Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we take the last question from the line of Zohair Nasir, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. My question was mainly around uh, the date of the consolidation. When is it expected to take place, and when is it uh, expected to show on the books? I think the Last question you answered. Uh, you mentioned that you are expecting it to close by first April 2022, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, that's right. Merge, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah, good. Yeah, and yeah, and we can expect it on the books by Q1 23. Yes, that is the current thing. After getting the approval, we'll be doing it around the first quarter of next year. Okay, and uh, just another question that I have is, uh, as of the moment, uh, what is the cash balance on the books, and is there any plan on the dividend front of it? Uh, now the the current uh, current thing, we have around 137 crores in books. That is the current balance of cash what we have as of the quarter ending. And uh, okay. if you look at it, the current focus is more from a successful merger of the entity. one subject to the approval of the authority and shareholders having said that uh, we are formulating the dividend distribution policy so the plan is to get it done before the end of the year the calendar year 21 and uh, we'll be bringing up to the board for the discussion for dividend by maybe uh, early uh, cy 2022 will be uh, as in the discussion again okay god thank you thanks thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah, thanks, Sanford. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the active participation and the questions and the interest shown in us. Uh, uh, you know, we are uh, looking forward to an even better quarter uh, coming up. And uh, uh, stay safe. Take care, all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Explore Solutions Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.